Amen. The title of my message this morning is Christmas, a time for a new beginning. Christmas, the time for a new beginning. Amen. I said the time for a new beginning. How many know it's time for, how many know that, that right around Thanksgiving, you know, that Sunday, uh, the Lord gave us a word. Amen. Um, God's word came to us. And he said, you will, not, you, will, you will be, you will have a glorious year, but not as last year's glorious was. For last year's glory manifested to save and to deliver. Amen. Last year's glory manifested to save and to deliver. And last year's, last year's glory, it just seemed like we were, we were just trying to, to, to survive and to stay afloat and to stay, you know, and come on now. We, we all went through some horrible things. We all, listen, but God, listen, but, but those of you that are here, I can tell you one thing. God is faithful. Hallelujah. I said, God is faithful. God is faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. And so listen. He said to us that his glory would manifest this year, but not as last year. For last year, the glory manifested to save and to deliver. But this year would be a, a year of gathering. I said a year of gathering. You know, now, I, I, I don't know what you need to gather. I don't know what you need. I don't know what you need in your life. But he said a new beginning and a year of gathering. This is, this marks, this marks my new year. You know, listen, and Christmas is a time for new beginnings. I said, Christmas is a time for new beginnings. Listen, where everything begins to turn around. But let me tell you, let me, let me, let me forewarn you about something. Let me forewarn you about something that when things start going good, don't curse yourself. I said, don't curse yourself. You said, what do you mean don't curse yourself? Don't say foolish things like, man, things have been going good. You know, it's bound to happen sometimes. Something's going to go bad. I just know it. Come on, how many of us have done foolish things like that? Everything is going too smooth. Look out for the storm. It's coming. Remember, there's a quiet before the storm. How many have said foolish things like that? No, it's just the peace of God ruling and reigning in your life. I said, no, it's just the peace of God that's ruling and reigning in your life. Why? Because he is setting us up for a new beginning. He is setting us up for a time, listen, of gathering. He is setting us up for a time of, of fun and fellowship and love and joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. This marks the time of a new beginning. Christmas marks the time of a new beginning. If you really look at the gift of Christmas, that's what it really was. It was the marking of a time where mankind could have a new beginning, where mankind were never, who, who was never allowed to go into the presence of God would now, would now be able to enter into his presence and have fellowship. Just listen, just as Adam did in the Garden of Eden. And I don't know about you, but I came, I came expecting, listen, I came expecting to get in his presence. And, and listen, from, from joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth. Are we receiving? Amen. Are we receiving? Because honestly, folks, if we're receiving our king, I said, if we are receiving our king and our king is ruling and reigning, then listen, then there should be an expression of what? Joy. Joy. See, it's a gift that marks the time for a new beginning. It's a gift that marks the time for change. <coughs> Hallelujah. Listen, go to, go to Luke chapter 2. And we're going to read all the way through uh, from verse 8 to verse 15. And then we're going to come back and break it down a little bit because there's some things. And, and, and listen, I, I'm, I'm just believing God that there's going to be some, he some healing going on. 
I, I'm just going to I'm just going to announce it right now so that so that you, you, you prepare your heart. Amen. Listen, so that you prepare your heart. And, and what I'm going to say is I seen some things in the scriptures yesterday, last night. Actually, I seen some things in the scripture that broke me down, had me sobbing like a baby at my desk. And I was just crying because God was telling me there's no more shame. There's no more shame. No more shame. And too many of us, listen to what I'm saying, too many of us aren't the person that God intended for us to be because there's some type of shame. Now, for those of you that, listen, for those of you that, 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 that you know, say, well, that doesn't, really, that doesn't really fit me, then listen, there's something in there for you also, I promise you, because God wouldn't bring you and not give you anything to feed on. Amen? Amen. But tell your neighbor right now, no more shame. This marks the day of a new beginning. Christmas is a time of new beginnings. Hallelujah. So let's read. And there were in, in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Listen, can we just stop right there real quick? Can I give you a quick explanation so you don't, you don't have to question it anymore? You heard it straight from the pastor's mouth. I didn't say horse's mouth. I said pastor's mouth. Listen. December 25th is not Jesus' actual birthday. December 25th is Pastor Eli's birthday. <laughs> if, you really, if you really must know, listen, Jesus was born maybe around September-ish, right around in there. You say, why? Because, listen, in December, it's just too doggone cold for the shepherds to be out. It's freezing, it's snowing, it's cold, it's icy, and they're not outside. Sometimes the animals ain't even outside. They bring them, they bring them to the stables as much as they can, amen? But listen, it says, and there were in that, same, in, that, in that same country, shepherds abiding in their fields, keeping watch. In other words, it was, it was nice, man. It was, it was like, you know, winter in Arizona. It's just right. Don't even have to wear a jacket sometimes. Amen. Verse, verse, verse nine, go on. Verse nine. <coughs> it says, and there were in this. Mm. It says, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And there were sore afraid. Verse 10. It says, and the angel said unto them, fear not for, for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy, which shall be, which shall be to all people. Everybody say all people. Amen. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a there was with the angels a, a mul there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising and saying, "Glory to God in the highest." And on earth, peace, goodwill towards man. This marks a time for a new beginning. I said, this marks a time for a new beginning. You have to decide. Listen, let's go back and let's break this down a little bit because I want to show you some things. Because, so, so let's just go ahead and go back to verse 8 and let's start at verse 8. And we're, I want to break it down really quick for you. It says, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. Verse 9. It says, and lo, the angel of the Lord uh, came upon them. The angel of what? The angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. In other words, they were, they were scared, man. They didn't know what was going on. Listen, how many times has some began? How many times has God begun to do something in your life and you don't know what it is? And all of a sudden, you know, you're like timid. You know, do I go for it? Do I not go for it? What, what do I do? And God is saying, listen, be not afraid. He's saying, be not afraid. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Listen, go to verse 11 and look at what the angel said. For unto you, I'm sorry, go to verse 10. Uh, we were in verse 10. I, I had to skip. It says, and the angel of the Lord said unto them, fear not, fear not, fear not. God, listen, this is a time for new beginnings. God is gifting us and has marked this time as a time for new beginnings. The gift of God was Jesus Christ. And listen, and the gift is a time for a change, a time for a new beginning where our life doesn't have to be the way it was. It could be much better. Hallelujah. 
And the angel of the Lord said unto them, fear not. And I love this. It says, for behold, I bring you good news. Everybody say good news. How many know Pastor Eli was, did an awesome job Wednesday night preaching on the good news? Amen. I was listening. I was gleaning. I was eating. I was, I was being fed. Amen. Excuse me. Good news of good tidings. Good tidings of great joy. Now, you know, I don't know about you, but if it is not bringing you joy, if what's, bring, is, if what's being preached is not bringing you joy, then it's not the gospel. You know, I had one, I had one young man call me up. He called me up. He was far away. He called me up and, 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 and you, know, you know, he knows that I've been preaching grace and stuff. And, and he called me up and he says, you know, a lot of preachers are watering down the gospel. I'm like, really? He said, yeah, man. He goes, they're watering down the gospel. And he, you know, wanted to sound real spiritual and stuff. And I said, well, what's the gospel to you? And, you know, he basically gave me all the do's and don'ts. I said, well, what happens if I can't break that habit? He goes, you got to. I said, what happens if I don't have the strength to? Amen. I said, what happens if I don't have the strength to? I said, am I going to hell? See, that's not good news. The good news is, is that, listen, the good news is, is that he will enable us. Mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. Can I tell you the good news? The good news is that when you receive this gift, that when you receive this gift, you are also being enabled. Listen, this gift of change. Everybody say gift of change. New beginning. Then what you're actually receiving is the ability, is the ability to, to change with him the thing. Mm, come on now. You know, Every time I think of change, you know, I, I, I think of the old Pentecostal teaching, you know, you know, that you got to be purged with fire. How many, how many have heard that old Pentecostal teaching being purged with fire? I believe it. I believe it. I believe I, I listen, I believe I'm a piece of gold being refined by fire. I'm in a process. Everybody say a process and I'm not jumping out. I said, I'm not jumping out. You know why? Let me tell you why. Because listen, the refiner knows exactly how hot to heat the gold. Did you hear what I said? The refiner knows, and he, listen, and he knows just how hot to get it so that he could separate all the slag and make the gold pure. He knows if the fire is too hot and it's going to take off too much and we're going to lose some of the gold with it. See, because I don't want to lose my value. And see, and I always think of this when, when, when I think of this, you know, and he said, are you watering down? No, I'm not watering down the gospel. I'm teaching the gospel. Why? Because the gospel is good news. And the good news is, is that, listen, God loves you just the way you are. God loves you. God loves you just the way you are. You understand? Let me say it again. God loves you just the way you are. Let me say it again over here. God loves you just the way you are. But he loves you too much to leave you there. I said he loves you too much to leave you like that. So in other words, he's not asking you to change. He's saying, I'm going to change you and I'm going to do it in such a way that you can handle it. And we're not going to lose any value of what I put into you. See, this is the gift of change. This is the crystal. Mm, let me go back to my story. Good tidings of great joy. Listen, which shall be to what? Which shall be to what? Say it again louder. You know, it's, a, it's, it's funny that this gift is to all people, but how many know some people, they, they, they're going to stay stuck? I said, some people are going to stay stuck. Listen, some people are going to grow so far and, then, and, and and it's like, okay, you know, I've grown far enough. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. In the church, I deal with people that, that listen, that, that are changing and that are embracing change because they're new, they're brand new, and they love the change that's happening. I got people that have, that have been in church and, and, and they know a little bit of something. Listen, but can I tell you the hardest people to change? 
Can I tell y'all the hardest people to change? The people that have been here the longest. Because I don't know why we get set that we don't need to change. Really, you've arrived. You're all that in a bag of chips with some nacho cheese. This is nacho cheese. No, folks, this is the time. Listen, this message is not just for the newcomer. You know, I heard this in my spirit right now. Oh, he's preaching, he's preaching a message of salvation. No, I'm not. I'm preaching a message to you that said that I'm preaching this message to you because you need change because you've been stuck in that same spot for too long. Listen, it says, which shall be to all people. This gift, how many know that, listen, how many know that gifts are given, but not all people receive them? You know, isn't that, isn't that odd? Isn't that strange? You figure if I, listen, you figure if I give you something, you figure if I give you something, amen, if I give you something, you know, people just get in line to, to take it, right? Wrong. People, re you know, you know, the, the, uh, the hardest, can I tell you one of the, one of the most hurtful things to God? <gasps> Did I say that? Did I say one of the most hurtful things to God? Can I tell you what it is? Can I tell you what it is? Who wants to know what it is? When you resist him. When you resist him. Oh, I got enough of God. Hallelujah. Help me, Lord. Listen, let's go on. Verse 10, verse 11, rather. Hallelujah. <clears throat> for unto you, here it is. For unto you is born this day. Everybody say this day. What day? What day? This day. See, for unto you is born this day. On, listen, we celebrate, we celebrate Christmas because we're, we're celebrating a time where we could, listen, where we could come and enjoy the gift of God that, listen, which was Jesus Christ. Listen, and with that gift came many things, but okay, we're not going to get into that right now. It says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David. Listen, God was saying this marks the time for a new beginning. You don't have to stay in the rut that you're in. You don't have to. Listen, some of you have been hurt. Some of you have been abused. Some of you have been done wrong, but you don't have to stay in that situation. Why? Because Christmas marked the day for a new beginning. Hallelujah. Yeah. It marks the day for a new beginning. I don't have to stay the same. I don't, listen, can, can I tell you the best part of it all? People don't de determine who I am anymore. If you don't like me, that's okay. I'm going to love you anyway. <laughs> Amen. If you love me, that's okay. I'll love you back. But it doesn't define. It doesn't define anymore. Who I am. Amen. People, people should never define who you are. Now listen to me. People can refine who you are. In other words, they can make you better at who you are. But nobody defines you. See, this is my wife of 28 years. Listen, as much influence as she has over my life, she does not define me. I was called from before I was born. Before I, listen, for before I formed you in the belly, he said to me, I knew you. He defined me before I was formed in the belly. Amen. Amen. So she does not define who I am. She refines me. In other words, she polishes me up only. 
She said, you need to wear red. I went, I, I, I went and got my white suit tailored and I got it all fixed up real nice. And, and the lady called me up at 4.30 in the afternoon. She goes, Mr. Barr, did you forget about your suit? I said, I did. And I, I'm in my work truck, got the trailer going. I'm like, wow, doing 100 miles an hour down Choo Choo. No, I wasn't doing 100 down Choo Choo Road. The truck doesn't do 100. I was doing about 55, 60 down Choo Choo Road and, and you know, I came in and got my suit and she goes, and, and, and then she says, excuse me, sir. And I said, yes, ma'am. She goes, what's the occasion? I said, church. She goes, oh, church. And I'm like, yeah, church. And I got it all fixed up and everything, you know, and pulled it out last night and, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, man, I'm gonna wear my white suit, you know, and, and my wife looks at me this morning. She says, so what are you wearing? So, you know, I already knew. Come on, guys. We already know, right? I said, what you want me to wear? I'm, I'm looking straight at the suit and I'm saying, so what you want me to wear? I want to wear you, man. You and me, we're, we're going to look good. She says, I think you need to wear red and black. I said, well, I wear black all the time. She goes, well, wear some red with it. And then she tries to butter me up, you know, when I get dressed. She goes, oh, you look nice. <laughs> you understand, she refines me, but she doesn't define me. Listen, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Listen, we have a Savior. I said, we have a Savior. Amen. Amen. Now listen, tell your neighbor, all gifts are wrapped. All gifts are wrapped. Soon, you will be wrapping and unwrapping a gift. And it, came, it comes straight from God himself. Sometimes I don't like unwrapping these gifts. You understand? But listen, it says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. Verse 12. Let's go to verse 12 real quick. It says, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. You know, I, I, you know, I, I know we do that, this, this, this tree play. I think we do it every other year or every two, three years we do the play. And I love it. You say, why do you like it so much? Because it, it, the, the trees tell the story of Christ. You know, and, and Colossians say that, that you know, if, 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 we don't, if, if we don't tell the story, you know, that, that creation awaits. Listen to what I'm saying. Creation awaits for the manifestations of the sons of God. Amen. And this is, this, and this is my thing, folks. We look at, we looked at, we look at this story, but you know, as, as I was looking at the major, you know, I, I'm thinking, wait a minute, a major is simply something that holds hay for the animals to feed. Yet they filled it with hay and they put Jesus in it. And I thought, wow, the greatest gift given to mankind wrapped in swaddling clothes he said, what's a swaddling cloth? You know, they just kind of interweave and wrap it around his legs, wrap it around his back, wrap it around. You know, they just wrap him all up in it so he'll stay warm. And you know, but, but, but listen, because this is the part that got to me last night. And I want you to pay close attention. As I was studying this out last night, I was thinking of some of my family members that have been having problems with family with kids, and I thought about their shame, and I thought about what they might be going through. And I looked at this, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, and now, now let me tell you the, the thought that I had. This is the thought that I had. Jesus was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Go ahead and take him to the crying room. Jesus was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Amen. And I thought to myself, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes when he came into this world. And right before he left this world, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. 
And the Lord, the Holy Spirit said, no, he wasn't. He said, look at customs. He said, look at customs. Amen. And this is the part that really ministered to my heart. Because this year has been a year where, you know, there have been things that have caused me shame and caused me to think, you know, what am I doing? And the Lord said, he goes, I'm going to show you something. And I need you to show it to the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. It's okay. You can tell them to be quiet. And this is the part that really got to me. You understand? As I started researching and going through and listen, reading commentaries and re researching it, I found that Jesus wasn't wrapped when he was crucified. He was nailed to the cross naked. And as I read the commentaries, the commentary said this was the last act of shame while they were being put to death. And so I began to pray and I began to ask God, I said, because I couldn't, I couldn't really handle the fact that you know for 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 a man folks or for a woman for a person one of the most shameful things is to be paraded around naked and so i asked I said, Lord, you could have called the angels. I said, you could have called the angels and you could have had them remove them and have them kill everybody there. He said, but who would have taken your shame? He took my shame so that I would never have to be ashamed. The reason that he was crucified and that he was completely naked was because it was the ultimate shame. And when we think that we have gone through shame, when we think that we've been shamed because people have done wrong to us and, and have messed with our emotions and have embarrassed us in such a way, we need to understand that we don't have to carry that shame. When people hurt us, when people have wronged us and I'm just going to say it those that have been raped molested abused this is a time of a new beginning because that shame no longer defines who you are. That shame, what you did and who you wronged and you said, you know, why would God ever really want me anymore? After all the things, the rotten things that I've done 
after all the people that I've hurt and, and we become full of shame. God is saying, you don't have to bear that shame. I died on the cross to set you free from all that shame. Listen, I wanted to make sure that what I was researching lined up with the scriptures, so I'm just going to give you the scriptures. You can write them down if you want to go back and research them. Matthew 27, 35 says that they took his clothes. All these scriptures pretty much say the same thing. Mark 15, 24. Luke 23, 34. And John 19, 23. These scriptures speak of the gift that was given that took your shame. This is the time of rejoicing. This is the time of letting go of all the shame. This is the time of a new beginning. I said, this is the time for a new beginning. This is the time for a fresh start. I said, this is the time for a fresh start. And I believe that with a fresh start, there's always a fresh anointing. I said, I believe with a fresh start, there's always a time for a fresh anointing. Listen, and all we have to do is choose the gift. Choose to say, I'm going to partake of this gift more this year than I ever have. I'm going to, listen, I'm going to take the gift of Christ into my life and I'm going to let him grow. I'm going to let Christ grow. I'm going to let Jesus grow on the inside of me because he was the gift for a new beginning. New beginning. No more sickness. See, with Jesus came the gift of a new beginning. There's no more sickness. You don't have to put up with sickness. You say, well, what do you mean? Listen, I don't care what you're going through. There's nothing that God can't heal and there's nothing that God can't reverse. You know, I, I, I believe in doctors. I believe in doctors. I go to doctors. I believe in doctors. You know what I don't believe? That they have the last word. Amen. Amen. I said, I just don't believe they have the last word. You say, why? I had a friend. Listen to me. I had a friend and, and <coughs> they, they said his heart blew up. They, his heart just blew up. And I remember a little old, little old. Well, she wasn't old. She was just a lady. She's short. Mama Daniels went in and prayed for him and started speaking life to that heart. The doctor says, he's got such a big hole in his heart, there's no way he's going to make it. She says, oh, he'll live and not die. And she walked out of there saying, he's alive, he's going to live. And the man is still alive today. They told us about my mama several times. There's nothing we can do. Don't even bother bringing, they told us, don't even bother bringing her in. Like, what do you mean don't bother bringing her in? We don't got morphine at home to make her feel better. At least to get her through the pain. Because she wasn't ready to die. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So it, listen, it doesn't matter. Jesus is the gift. Listen, Jesus is the gift of a new beginning. And when we partake of Jesus, when we, listen, when we all go ahead and wholeheartedly accept what he's done for us, then listen, there is no more shame. There is no more sickness. There is no more poverty. We don't, listen, can I tell you a secret? You don't have to partake of poverty. I hate being poor. I don't know if there's anybody here that likes being broke, but if you do come up, we'll pray for you for the first thing that's got to be healed is your mind. 
Bream broke stinks. You don't have to be poor. No more sorrow or grief. You know, can we turn our Bibles to, 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 to uh, Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5? And I'm going to conclude with this. I wanted to go on, you know, about the new gift. We'll just finish it next week because the next week I want to go into, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Listen, uh, let us put on the, the new man, uh, which is created in, in the likeness of God. Amen. Amen. And work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why? Because if we're going, listen, if we're going to gather, then we need to, listen, then we need to start this new beginning right. Hallelujah. It says, surely he has borne, our, go to verse three. I like verse three too. Verse three is awesome. Listen to what verse three says. It says, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid it as it were our faces from him. He is despised and we esteemed him not. Listen, he, go back. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows. A man of sorrows. And we, and he, and he is acquainted with grief. And we hid our face as it was from him. He is despised and, and we esteemed him not. Listen. Listen, he, is despised, he was despised and we esteemed him not. What is it saying? It's saying that, listen, Jesus was so beaten. So, but you've got to understand one thing, that his whole purpose for being born was to give you life. The whole purpose of Christmas is to give life. Can I tell you something, my brother? The whole purpose of Christmas is not to see how expensive a gift you can buy, but rather who are you giving life to? You know, the whole purpose of Christmas is not to see what you can give and what you can receive, but rather are you giving life? Can I say this? This is where we've lost the whole message of Christmas. Because what we've actually lost is we've given them material things in and substituted life. See, I can give you, I can give you a, uh, something material and it'll, it'll make you happy for a moment. But if I give you life, it'll sustain you exactly. See, and we've given our families material things that have, has not been able to sustain them. And we've left out life, which is what was going to carry them through even after you're gone. See, one of the greatest things you could give your children are those tamales. <laughs> See, one of the greatest things that you can, that you can do is Spend time with somebody just loving them. One of the greatest things you can do is just take somebody out that, you know, you normally don't hang out. You know what? I just, I don't want you to be alone today. And give them life. See, the greatest gift that was given to us, Jesus said it this way in John 10, 10. He said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He says, but I have come. But I have come. But I have come, he's defining why he came. But I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So this Christmas, give the gift that was given to you. Give the gift that was given to you. You say, but what if I have no life to give? Then give them your life. You know, there was a, there was a, a, a gentleman one time, uh, he, was, he was in the home and uh, we got in close and he didn't have anything to give me. And I, gave, I gave him, I gave him a, a small gift. I knew the kind of cologne he liked and he, didn't, he couldn't afford to buy it. It was quite pricey actually. 
And so I went and got some and I gave it to him for Christmas. And, and so he didn't know, he didn't know what to give me. So he, he goes and he looks 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 through all his stuff. He says, man, he goes, you don't know how, how embarrassed I feel. He goes, because I have nothing to give you. <laughs> he says, but I want to give you this. And this is what he said to me. He said, it was the last thing my father gave me. He said, it was the last thing my father gave me. You know, generally, when a dad does something like that for his son, it's, it's something that's going to remind him and give him life. And I took that gift, cleaned it up, and I put it in the china cabinet where I could see it all the time. Because that gift gives me life. You say, how does it give you life? It reminds me of my purpose in this world. I look at my family. I look at my family and if you really didn't do much Christmas shopping this year, we figured we'd do it the easy way. Gift cards. They're gonna forget what we get. How many of you remember what you got last year? One, two, three, very few people. Very few people remember what you got last year. Listen, I can still remember the last Christmas as a kid with my mom. Can you remember? Well, she left. My mama was a big old hefty woman. She gave me a little, little car. It was a little Hot Wheel. Didn't mean nothing to me. But let me tell you what meant a whole lot. She got a, some balls and some jacks. I can't even bend my legs the way she did. And she was a big woman. She crossed her legs. And then she says, okay, everybody, come sit around. We're going to play jacks now. And the funniest thing is that my mama always cheated <laughs> when it came to jacks. <laughs> we would tell her, mama, you moved that jack. No, I didn't. That jack didn't move. It was there. And the jack had spun out about three times. <laughs> It was there. The ball hit it. And she'd keep on going. And the only one that would win was whoever mama decided would win. Then she would sit us down. You know, we're, 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 we're celebrating Christmas with my in-laws on the 26th this year. And every year it's the same tradition. She gives life. You know what she does? She sits us around and she gives us ham. Different tradition for different folks. It doesn't mean one's better than the other. But then my mama would sit us around and she would put out all the tamales. And I would gain about 10 pounds instantly. You understand? Folks, this is a time for a new beginning. This is a time for gathering. Jesus was the greatest gift ever given to you. He took your shame, he took your sorrow, he took your pain, he took your disease, he took your poverty, he took your, he took, listen, he took your sadness, he took your depression, he took, and instead of it, he gave you joy, he gave you peace, he gave you love, he, he gave you, he gave you prosperity, he gave you joy in the Holy Ghost. The question is, who will you give life to? I got a lot of life from that song we were singing just a little while ago. Anybody else get life besides me from that song? I'm like, I want to just get out and dance, man. I didn't even want to sing. I just like, 
Every praise is to our God. Go ahead, Brandon. Why'd you stop? I was going to try to mimic you on Facebook. Say this with me. Jesus is the reason for my new beginning. I can. I will. I must. I must. 